Can I ask, does fasting play any role in detoxification? Yes. And so I'm a huge proponent of intermittent fasting. Okay. Again, there is a time and place. People who are pregnant, anyone who's had a history of disordered eating should not try any sort of restriction around food. Okay. But I myself practice intermittent fasting Mm -hmm. where I typically eat between the windows of 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. I always take breaks and I fast depending on where I am in my cycle. Of course. So, um, yeah. In the luteal phase of a woman's cycle, she really shouldn't do any sort of fasting protocol, yeah. which is the last couple of days before you get your of period. Of course, yeah. You need yeah. like 300 extra calories a day or something like that generally and around that time. And your progesterone levels are typically low and you need food and need carbohydrate to lift them up. So I think any extreme fasting during that time would make PMS symptoms worse. Of course. Is fasting different for men and women? Because obviously we have such different hormones. Yes. I think men um, can do intermittent fasting on a more consistent basis. Okay. Whereas women, we need to be very careful with about where we are with our okay. cycle. And okay, intermittent fasting, what about what do you think about a longer fast? Because I remember hearing some data, I think it was on a podcast and I'm, I'm not educated on it, so bear with me, but that a 36 hour fast, basically after the first 16 hours, you're your body's kind of eating itself. It's eating those toxins or it's not eating them, but you know what I mean? It's cycling yeah. out those toxins. Is there any truth to that? To that? There's um, a, it's called autophagy and it's a Greek word. Autophagy literally means to eat oneself. Okay. And so you said it and yeah. you kind of laugh, but autophagy is the process that happens during fasting. Also okay. with infrared sauna use. Oh, in okay. In which your body goes in and these meta basically eats like little Pac-Men, eats wow. little dysfunctional cells, cells that are dying and not working well, cells that would otherwise turn into cancer cells. And so longer fasting protocols are great for deeper cellular cleansing okay. and longevity. Mm-hmm. I think most people try to do long fast to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And I think that that's a nightmare. In yeah. fact, we... um can start muscle wasting and we think we're losing all this Oh no, weight. okay. And so I am a fan of deeper protocols. There is a time, there is a place, and there has to be a clear yeah. and true vision for what you're trying to achieve. Most people who are doing those protocols are not doing them for the right reason. That was my question that we had in the office today because we were talking about what has, what has ever worked for you in losing weight. And everybody, pretty much 90% of the office said, I think fasting is the only thing that worked. And I said, I'm going to ask Carly, how can you tell the difference if you haven't ever struggled or consciously struggled with an eating disorder? How can you tell if I'm fasting for the right reasons for detoxification or if it's just a good old fashioned eating disorder? Well, imagine if I said to you, you will not lose any weight during this fast. Would you still do it? Right. That's it right there. And what you said about people saying, you know, the only way I've lost weight is through fasting First of all, they don't know. Are you getting a body composition analysis where you're looking to see whether... Thank you. Was it fat? Was it muscle? Was it water? And I don't care about losing weight. I care about permanent weight loss. Show me one person who has used a fast to lose four pounds and has kept that four pounds off. I mean, show me the amount of people in a room who could say that that happened. So... My number one goal is that when you're losing weight, you're saying goodbye to those pounds that will never return, not during a holiday season, yes, not during yeah. a depressing or stressful time in your life, not during a grief episode. It's like what you said, the recovery race. Correct. Yeah. And honestly, what happens is our identity starts to change. Oh, interesting. So most people will go on a diet and it's the diet that changes, but like how they think, who mm-hmm. they hang out with, what they consider as fun, it yeah. doesn't change. Yeah. So they're basically in a straight jacket. So for the time that they're on the diet, they still go out to the bars and they still go to the same restaurants, but they make different decisions. In permanent weight loss, everything changes. Okay. How you think, yeah. how you show up, who you spend time with, what you do for fun, um, you know, what you seem, what you deem pleasurable. It's like no longer pleasurable for me to go out to a restaurant where they sell crappy food and order the salad. That's not fun for me. No, no. So I don't do that anymore. Yeah. And, you know, my idea of fun is everybody would laugh at it, but it's like to do healthy things. Yeah. Yeah. So 
when it's permanent, what happens is the pain that we normally associate to restriction, to exercise, to going to sleep early, to drinking a ton of water and peeing all day, to paying for the right supplements, we actually start to associate pleasure to it. You love us. Yeah. yeah. I actually started kind of a, my health and fitness journey really, I started my health and fitness journey a couple of years ago, but it's different. And I say I started it then because I enjoy it. And it was a lifestyle change because I don't struggle to say, oh, we should go to the gym today. Maybe we shouldn't go. We skipped today. I don't think like my, that's not the mindset. It's like, no, I need, I'm going like, it's just part of the day and I love it. So I like, like you said, I went on a trip with my mom to Las Vegas this year and it was a great trip. We really had a great time. We bonded so much. But it was like the alcohol, the she smokes cigarettes, the just shitty food and the, like yeah. the McDonald's or whatever that's in the hotels. And it was like, gosh, that is, I just, that's not like, that's, there was a bit of time five years ago that would have been all I needed. But now I'm like, and that's okay. That, 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 you know, I'm not really into that anymore. I like a trip where we're going on this insane hike with this incredible view. You know what I mean? Yeah. Going to these crazy restaurants that do you know, big elaborate things rather than like, oh, I get, I'll have a McDonald's in my hotel room. You know what I mean? Right. So it kind of, it is interesting how it is a, that's such an interesting way that you put that, that it changes from everything that you like and how you associate yourself to yourself. That all yeah. changes. Your pain and pleasure neuro associations shift. 